Our uh, second reading this morning comes to us from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, uh, verses 1 through 3 and uh, 14 through 18. Hear now the word of the Lord. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, where we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for God has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs an omer to a person according to the number of persons all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, those who gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. This is the word of the Lord. So today we are starting a worship series called Our Money Story. We'll be looking at stories in the Bible of times when God has provided for us and times when we have provided for each other. The series is divided into four sections. Remember, release, reimagine, restore. The creative team that put together the prayers, poetry, and art for this series, and also for Unraveled, which we just finished last week, chose to pair the story of the betrayal of Judas with the story of manna in the wilderness. Thematically, it seemed like a pretty odd pairing to me at first. I happen to love the story of manna in the wilderness, and when we read it last year, it was with immense glee that I had Rachel, Dave, and Bill pelt you all with mini marshmallows from the balcony to illustrate the story. It was delightful. Easily a highlight of my preaching career. Uh, but the story of manna is neither as iconic nor as dark as the story of the Last Supper. So if you'll pardon the pun, I had to chew a bit on how these stories connected. See, because they're, they're both about bread. In, in the Manna story, uh, the Israelites are out of slavery, out of the sea, and the adrenaline of their escape has worn off. And they're starting to realize that they're in for a long journey before they can ever get to the promised land. The food they packed has run out, and they're getting anxious and hangry. Where are they supposed to find food in the wilderness? Are they just going to starve there? 
If God was going to let them die, why couldn't they at least have died in Egypt where they had food? Panic set in and a mentality of scarcity. As they broke their last loaves, it must have seemed to them that it was their last meal. When Jesus shared his last meal with his friends, only two of the people at the table knew that it would be their last together, that everything was going to change as soon as they had finished eating. The Israelites must have cursed God. Why bother to rescue them from slavery just to let them die? The miracles were great and all, but now they're starving. I imagine that I would be angry too if I were watching my entire community slowly starve. Judas did worse than the Israelites. Whatever his motivation was, he handed Jesus, his God, his Messiah, and maybe what is worst of all, his friend, over to the authorities to be executed. And yet, God still shared bread with the Israelites. And somehow, Jesus still blessed bread and broke it and shared it with his friends. God still provided for us, even when we complained, even when we rebelled, even when we became traitors, even when we didn't deserve it. God could have told Moses to tell the Israelites that dinner would be ready when they were ready to apologize. But God didn't do that. Jesus could have taken away one of the plates from the table and told those gathered that the meal was only for his real friends. But Jesus didn't do that. We like to say that our God is a God of love. We should say this because it happens to be true. Our God is a God of love. But we also like to put conditions on our love. We don't want people to go hungry, but there is often an understanding that we would prefer to offer food to the people whom we know are the right kind of people. People who are clean and quiet and who say thank you. But that's not how God works. There is enough. Enough for the Israelites no matter how much they've gathered, no matter the size of the family living in their tent. No group went hungry, but no group had excess either. There is enough, enough for all of the disciples, even Judas. There is enough. There is enough salvation. There is enough justice. There is enough kindness. There is enough love. None of these things are a competition. God doesn't have a point system to give more grace to the nicest person or the funniest person or the person with the strongest internet connection or to any other superlative that we humans are so very, very concerned with. We don't have to go without these things but we can't hoard them either. What would it take for us to feel satisfied? To gather the manna that we need and leave the rest for someone else? To accept our place at the table without asking why someone is sitting with us? To set aside the labels of best and worst and first and last? What would it look like to feel as though we had enough?